I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago. But all will be okay. I move on each and every day. Welcome back to my channel, my YouTube family, my rock stars. Today we're gonna talk about a very important topic why it sucks to be poor in Jamaica and anywhere else in the world for that matter and it's a tough topic to process so we're gonna be having a drink and let me warn you my alcohol tolerance is extremely low so if my words start swirling after a half a glass And if I start saying things, I'm taking full responsibility for everything I say. I'll never blame the alcohol. But accept it for what it is. And while I'm here, we have these at Goffa, at our store at Southdale Plaza, or also on the platform. And can you believe they're under $20? I can't remember the price now, but I'll pop it up and I'll put it in the link in the description. And they basically are very nice bottle holders for your wine. So it works. Let me show you. Let me get the camera closer so I can show you how it uses gravity and all kind of things to look like the bottle is floating. Just a sec. You see what I mean? Take a look at that. You see how it appears that the bottle is floating on the chain and we do have them in bronze and silver let's jump right into it but before let me just pour a drink while i pour the drink take the time to just subscribe if you haven't done so already and my rock stars just like the video and you can take back your like if by the time i'm done you're not finding value you can always take back the like but it doesn't hurt to like right now let's go pour a glass and for the first time in a long time i'm all right I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain, some things are not the same. You know, I believe one of my greatest blessings in society was to be born poor. Because I'm able to look at life through different lenses. I can look at it from the point of view of someone who has nothing or who has very little. And having worked over the years and achieved many of my life goals, I can also look at it from the spectacles of someone who has more. And let me tell you something, being able to assess day-to-day -day situation from both perspectives have often left me disturbed. And I'll give you some examples. Today we're going to talk about social class privilege in the world. And also, I live in Jamaica, so I get to see it a lot here, but I've also traveled to many continents and it's not just limited to Jamaica, I promise you. And the fact that money is king and poverty sucks. So are you ready to talk about rich privilege? and what we can do to stop it because we can do something we may not move the needle a lot but even a little in this regard would be worth it now let me share a scenario with you so i drive up to the parking lot where i go to get my hair done and my nails and whenever I drive up, the security guard always stands at attention, ready to serve me. And when I say attention, I don't mean this, no. I mean he just pays attention. When I drive in, he will help me to back in to my parking space, or he will actually find a parking space for me and then help me to back into it. And I'm often taking work to the hairdresser, so he'll help me with my my laptop bag and my water and whatever else I'm carrying and sometimes he'll help me to get to the actual salon and sometimes he'll just help me to get out of my vehicle. The point is he's attentive from the moment I show up. 
Now, about two weeks later, my vehicle was being serviced, so I decided to drive my son's vehicle to the salon. And I drive into the same parking lot, and the same security guard was there, and I thought he didn't see me because, you know, he didn't get up as he would have in the past. So I drove over to where he is because there was no parking space and I needed him to help me. Somehow he's always able to make something out of nothing and I needed his help. So I drove closer to where he was sitting to make sure he could see the vehicle, but the vehicle is slightly tinted so he couldn't necessarily see who it was. And he, I can't remember what he was doing, but he looked up and he looked back down. And I didn't want to disturb him or, you know, again, when you come from nothing, you don't expect. So I said, you know what, let me drive around. And I waited on someone and I parked myself and I took out my big computer bag and my stuff and I made my way to the salon. And when I was walking past where he sat, I said, good morning. How are you today? And he said, wow, where's your vehicle? And I said, it's over there. And I showed him my vehicle. Can you guess what the difference was, my rock stars? Guess what was different? Obviously, I was driving my vehicle, which is a Range Rover. When I had the helpful experience, that was what I pulled up in. And two weeks later, I'm in my son's vehicle, which is a RAV4. So what it proved to me is something I already knew, which is that people, unfortunately, treat people based on what they believe they have. Very unfortunate. But let's keep going, because there's more. So I was redoing my office to make it more into a studio. So I go to and I'm looking for like decorative mirrors for the walls, matching mirrors. And I found a decent set in there. But as I was looking for the mirror, I was walking around and there was this young lady who came over. She asked if she could help me. Now, I was coming from a business meeting, so I was dressed to the nines. You know, we're, we're, looking, we're looking like we're on fleek. I guess that's how the young people say it. So I walked in, she was very attentive, she came over. I started to buy more than I came to buy and she went for a, one of those baskets and she carried it while I packed things into it. And we were having good conversation. She escorted me to the cashier, I paid and she walked me to the vehicle and helped me to put the stuff in the vehicle. And I was grateful. Well, the following day I'm in my office and I'm you know, putting up my mirrors. And I had bought nail, some small wire nail, because I wanted to put it, well, concrete nail, I should say, because I wanted, I thought nail was the appropriate thing to put in, to put them on the wall. I realized that the best thing to use to put them on the wall was actually double-sided tape. So I was in my house pants, and I'll show you what those look like. I, I'm sure I can find a picture of my house pants or my house clothes and my house t-shirt. I was doing a lot of work in the house, so I wasn't looking clean. My hair looked like I just woke up. It wasn't combed and it was all over the place because when I scratch, I don't usually fix back all the time like I do right now. I wasn't wearing jewelry, nothing. And I just slipped in to some Crocs grabbed my handbag and I left the house exactly how I was because I didn't want to stop to get ready and do all of that. I just wanted to grab the double-sided tape and come back home. When I went into this hardware, I came upon the same young lady. Now I have no idea where the double-sided tape is. So I walk over to her and she walked by me, almost like I was invisible, believe it. And as she walked by, I said, excuse me, uh, how are you? She didn't recognize me. I said, where's the double-sided tape? She said, I think it's in aisle, and she tell me the aisle name. And I head to the aisle, and I was picking up a few more things as well. And I was struggling, obviously, with the things in my hand because I didn't want to waste time to go get the trolley or the basket and then to come back. 
And she walked past me again, struggling with the things in my hand. And she let me be. And I went to the cashier, cashed out, went to my vehicle on my own and drove back home. Why do I share these two distinct examples with you, my rock stars? Because I want you to see how social privilege works. Oftentimes, we think it's just people who are rich looking down on the average person who has not had as many opportunities as them. But no, we ourselves, we who are still in the weeds, are still treating people better because we believe based on how they look, what they drive, where they live, how educated they are, and what they wear makes them better than others. And as such, we treat them better because we believe that they deserve better. We have got to stop that. And I know my video will not change the world, but if a few of you watching this realize what it's doing to your fellow man, and instead of choosing to give preferential treatment to someone because of their material possession, you choose to do so because they're human or based on their character, I think this video would have achieved its purpose. So I'm gonna take you on a conversation today and usually my videos have an introduction it has a body and a conclusion. This one is gonna be all over the place. So have some faith and trust that I'll end up somewhere that makes sense. And please be a little bit patient. And you know, it's funny, I'm drinking red wine, which if I'm drinking wine, that's my favorite, but I didn't grow up drinking wine. Well, nobody grows up drinking wine because then we would be giving children alcohol, right? But I mean, when I got to the age where I could drink wine, it was just not in, available in my household because wine is something that rich people drink and I definitely was far from rich. So I did not acquire the taste. And I want to tell you that even today, I still haven't acquired the taste for most wines. So I stick to a few that are more on the fruity side, kind of dry, but on the fruity side, or I stick to some sort of a uh, champagne or a bubbly because we can't say champagne anymore some kind of a bubbly but i haven't acquired a taste if you put a glass of sugar and water which is lemonade lime sugar water before me and some wine i'm gonna pick sugar and water every single opportunity i get but sometimes i feel for that tart taste in my mouth and that's when i will have a glass of wine so why am I talking about drinking wine? Because it's what the privilege does. And today we're talking about privilege and we're gonna live it up a little bit. And I'm not gonna drink tea, which is what I usually do. I'm gonna be sipping on some wine, so go grab some. Let's live up for a moment, guys. So you realize in the two examples I shared earlier that the only difference in the one at my hairdresser is the fact that I drove a different vehicle and the one at the hardware is because of my attire and how I presented myself. I was judged and I was handled accordingly. One of the things that I realized, especially being in big cities like a Kingston or a New York, it didn't happen as much in my rural district in Montego Bay or St. James, I should say, is when you're at a social event, People might introduce themselves to you, but shortly afterwards, they ask what you do. Why do you care what I do? Why don't you judge me based on my character? They care because they want to measure you and to determine if they need to level up or if you're worthy of their conversation. Occasionally, I'll be asked which school I attended because obviously, people judge you based on your education level can't understand why because some of the smartest people i know they're street smart and not book smart but anyway people still do that and some people will say you're a rocket are you related to and they always ask me about the wealthy side 
of my family. The P, the, those who own the villas and the trucking companies, they never ask me about the Rockets that are not doing well because they want to associate you with a certain name and a certain class so they can decide how they're going to engage you. Unfortunate, isn't it? If tomorrow I go into a business place and I get poor customer service and I start to chip some cloth, for those who don't know, I start to swear and curse, which I wouldn't do. It's not, it's not me. But let's say hypothetically, I start to just let it out. <laughs> you know what they're going to say? They're going to say that I'm angry. I'm upset. If it was 20 years ago, when I did not have dry you-know-what and you-know-where, for those listening who are international, when I had nothing, if I walk into a business place and, ch and chip some words, they would say that I'm classless. Why? Because they're using what I look like and who they think I am to determine what level in society I fall. How many times have you been at your workplace and you see somebody come in to start work and they're working in a position that you know they're not qualified for and they're failing at the role, but because they knew somebody with influence, they were able to cop that role or that position. Happens a lot, doesn't it? And the list goes on. Guys, I want you to tell me in the comments if you have ever witnessed social privilege or rich privilege where you live. And give me an example if you wish to share. Now, I won't be a hypocrite because I actually do like when the security guard comes and helps me to park. I do like it. And if I say I didn't like when the store representatives come and help me with my cart and help me to identify and find things in a store while I'm shopping, I would be lying. I like it. So does that make me bad or a bad person because I enjoy social privilege? I don't think it does because here's what I'm advocating for with this video. We should do that for everybody not just people who look a particular way, who drive a particular vehicle, who live in a particular place. It should be common action. So store clerks out there, you need to be treating everybody with the same amount of respect. Remember, you know, the only difference between the person who is rich or wealthy and that person who is walking into the store is the fact that the person who is rich or wealthy had a lot more opportunities and they were able to capitalize on those opportunities. They're not better. They're not usually more knowledgeable. They may be more educated, but knowledge and education are two different things. But we encourage the behavior because we discriminate openly. And some of us don't even realize we're doing it because it's so ingrained in our culture that it comes naturally to us. Let me give you another example. I'm driving through Havendale during mango season and I realize that there are mangoes that have fallen outside of the perimeter fence on the side of the road from the trees of people who live in Havendale. I think in the law, it says if it's outside of their perimeter fence, it belongs to the public. So I see good, good Julie mango on the side of the road. So I pull over and I start picking up a few mangoes. And I remember, I never forget her because I've done it a few more times. Yeah, I get free mango, I'm gonna take it. But I never forget the lady came out and she saw me picking up the mangoes. And again, I was driving a luxury vehicle. And she said, Miss, you like mangoes? I said, yes, I love Julie. And I hope you don't mind. These weren't on your property. So I thought I could pick them up. She said, no, man, that's fine. You're helping me to, you know, so I don't have to maintain it and I don't have to clean it up after it gets bad. And she said, you know, I have some more inside. And she goes inside and takes out a whole bag of mangoes and give it to me. Now, if the average person 
walking by, picked up those mangoes, they probably would have been treated differently. Now, this lady is a sweetheart, so I don't think she would, but in another household, they probably would call the police and say they're stealing from their property, which is not the case. But again, it was based on what I looked like and what I was wearing and what I drove. We need to stop it, people. Now, I want to give you an example how social privilege and rich privilege is ingrained in our DNA. So, of course, as you know, I grew up in rural Jamaica, rural St. James, and I grew up with a beautiful extended family. I had an amazing childhood. So it's no surprise that when I could afford to build my first house at age, in my early 20s, I was done by 25, I chose to tear down the old board house that I grew up in, which was really in terrible condition by this time. And I tore it down and I built in the exact same spot where that house was and built a home for my extended family. Now many persons said to me, why would you move back into the community? People are gonna hate, they're gonna be judgmental, they're gonna be bad mind against you. And trust me, as I told you in my book, I experienced some of that judgment to the point where they called police to raid my house because, and I should say our house, because it's my family house, to raid our house because they accused me of drug smuggling because they can't fathom that somebody at my age who was born poor was able to build a 6,000 square feet house that many in that community would call a mansion. And they don't see the hard work. They just focus on the results. But anyway, the judgment was real, the hate was real, but I didn't care. So I moved back into that community and let me tell you what happened. Before I left, because I got pregnant, everybody called me by my alias, which is Sandy. Sandy, how you doing? And it was very casual. By the time I moved back and built this house for my family, the same people, some of them much older than I, or me, is that the proper English, me, were saying, Miss Sandy. And I'm like, when did I become Miss Sandy? I started to feel old. Why? Because in their mind, they have elevated me. I'm the same person. In my mind, I'm at the same place. But because they see success or what they deem to be success, and they realize I am putting myself together. Well, I always put myself together well, even when I had no money. I always made an effort, but I'm driving a particular vehicle. I can build a particular house. They elevate me and started to treat me differently from everybody else. You see what we're doing to ourselves, my people? We need to stop. Everybody else in that community should get the same amount of respect. So it actually starts with us. It's not about the rich looking down on us only. I mean, that does happen, but I want to say it happens less than we looking down on ourselves because we are poor or were born poor or didn't have as much privilege. Tell me in the comments if you agree or what your thoughts are if you disagree. You see that same rich privilege, it's what's causing us to find the money to buy the BMW when we should be buying a Corolla because we can't really afford a BMW, but we want to impress our friends and we want the gate to fly or open for us when we go to certain places and we want the security guard to jump up and help us. We're doing it to ourselves. It's that same rich privilege that causes us to buy the house and live in the community when sometimes we can't afford to because we want to benefit from being treated like we're somebody because we have low self-esteem. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with buying a nice car and living in a nice house, but don't do it because you're gonna get ahead in society or you're gonna be perceived to be better off unless it's necessary for your business because I do remember a story that a friend told me that his I think it was his cousin or his brother who studied law in the US and came back to Jamaica and could not get any clients. 
and he said to his cousin or brother, go and buy a brand new BMW and watch how many clients you get. Now this lawyer had no experience, but he was now driving a brand new BMW that he took out on credit and clients came in droves. You see what I'm talking about? So sometimes you have to do it to get ahead. I understand that. And you need to position yourself in such a way to capitalize on your opportunities but don't allow it to consume you and don't allow it to make you look down on people and treat people differently because you would have at that point been somewhat of a victim to it when you realize before you had the bmw as a good lawyer you weren't getting any jobs and the car is all that changed in your equation and now you have more clients than you need it's the same rich privilege why we marry for money because we want to be associated with success or a name that people will recognize it's that same rich privilege why we try to make friends with people who we think have influence or who we think have money it's hypocritical we need to stop it and those people are seen right through you most of the time. So don't think they're receiving you in their circle because they think you're genuine and authentic and mean them well. And stop sucking up to people with money or influence because you want to get ahead. Again, sometimes you have to make decisions from a strategic perspective to get ahead in business. You have to do what you have to do, but don't get consumed by it. That said, I'm gonna put a few things out there. I'm gonna call them disclaimers for my sake. I don't like being asked what I do when I've just met you. So if you meet me somewhere, get to know who I am based on my character and not based on where I live, what my title is, what I do for a living, as you're trying to ascertain what my level of wealth or privilege is. I do like when the security helps me, but I want him to help everybody else. The store clerks as well. So if you're a security guard watching this, be kind to everybody you come across. Don't do it based on who they are or who you think they are because oftentimes what they show you is not exactly who they truly are deep down. So in summary, my rock stars and I have ranted and raved and as I said, this video is all over the place, but I hope you can get something of value from it. But here's how I'd like to close. Don't just be nice to people who you think have influence or who you think have money. If you have an opportunity to be nice to people, don't judge and don't discriminate. The man cleaning your windscreen or the vendor who is trying to sell you a product on the road, treat them with the same amount of respect as you would your manager, your pastor, or somebody you respect in society. It's only fair for you to start with you. I'm starting with me, and I've always treated people with respect. I don't know if it's because I was born with little and I knew what it felt like to not be treated with respect, why I make it. As a matter of fact, I'm probably biased, which I shouldn't be because I, I believe I treat people who don't have anything better than I treat the people who have something. So I really have some lessons to learn as well and I can do better because I think I need to make it equal instead of choosing to be better with those who are less fortunate. And that's all I'm encouraging you to do with this video. And right now, guys, I told you a few sips can make me a little bit tipsy. And I do feel a little bit lightheaded. But let's show everybody respect, love, and acceptance. And let us start this battle or fight against social privilege or rich privilege. Being poor shouldn't suck. It really is a construct. It's not your destiny. And nobody should be judged or treated unfairly because of it. Cheers. My YouTube family, until next time, my rock stars, 
take care and all the best. I've changed for the better this time. I thought I would never be fine. I strive just to say I'm alright. And for the first time in a long time, I'm alright.